Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I am super excited because I finally got my hands on a new 6000 series Ryzen APU with those built-in RDNA 2 graphics. Given I had to pick up a really expensive laptop to get this up and running, but I was really interested to see how these perform and they are absolutely amazing. So what I have here is the new ASUS G14, really expensive laptop, it does have a dedicated GPU, but as soon as I got this up and running and updated all the drivers, I disabled the dedicated GPU, I haven't even tested it, because I'm more interested in the built-in iGPU. What we have here is the new AMD Radeon RDNA 2 integrated graphics, definitely a huge upgrade from Vega, and even this mobile unit here is beating the desktop counterpart of the Vega 8. They're actually calling this the 680M, and it has 12 CUs and a max clock up to 2400 MHz. And this laptop here just happens to have the Ryzen 9 6900 HS APU. But I am going to limit the wattage on this to around 35 watts to kind of put it on par with what we can expect out of the 6800U. This was the only Ryzen 6000 series APU that I could get my hands on right now, and I was very, very eager to test it out. And really, when it comes down to it, this is going to be great for thin and light laptops, but what I'm more interested in are mini PCs powered by this chip. Let's say the 6600U, the 6800U, on up to the HS and the HX. We will be seeing some of those 6000 series mini PCs coming to the market soon, but I just want to tell you, this is definitely going to change the whole gaming space when it comes to mini PCs. These new integrated RDNA 2 graphics are no joke, and they perform absolutely amazingly. Alright, so here we are. I'm running Windows 11 Pro, and I'm actually really excited to show off this performance. I was blown away by this new iGPU. These are going to be absolutely amazing in many PCs, but like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the only unit I could get my hands on right now is a laptop with this new RDNA 2 APU from AMD. And this one is that 6900HS, but we will be limiting the wattage on it because this is a pretty powerful CPU like it sits, and they do pull a lot of wattage. But in my testing, we're going to be running this at 35 watts. And it's going to be on par with something like the 6800U in performance mode. And not to mention, when we start getting the 6000 series AMD mini PCs, we'll be able to take the wattage way up. AMD is calling their new integrated graphics on this chip the 680M, and it is based on RDNA 2. It's also going to be coming in the 6800U. We have 12 CUs and a max clock of 2400 MHz. So if I just stress this CPU out, you can see that the GPU clock jumped up to 2400 MHz. Another thing that's really helping this system out is DDR5 memory. This has 16 GB of DDR5 running at 4800 MHz. So that really helps out with these internal graphics. So the very first thing I want to take a look at are some benchmarks. Alright, so first up we have 3D Mark Night Raid, and this is definitely the highest iGPU score that I've seen out of anything from AMD or Intel so far. 24,146, and just to put this into perspective for you, my highest scoring Ryzen 5700G got a 20,102, and that was with an overclock of 2400 on the built-in Vega 8 graphics. And remember that 5700G is a desktop processor, and with the overclock I have, it pulls up to 180 watts. Next up, 3D Mark Fire Strike, total score here 6,098, and on that 5700G, 4,679. And the final test here is Time Spy, coming in with a 2,649, and again, on that 5700G, the highest score I was ever able to get was 1,892, so we definitely have a nice jump in performance when it comes to these integrated graphics. Those are benchmarks, and now it's time to see how this thing really handles gaming. Alright, so first we have Forza Horizon 5, 1080p, I've got rendering resolution set to quality, and we're at the lowest preset right now. If you take a look at Afterburner, we've got this APU set to 35 watts, which really doesn't allow us to boost up on the CPU or even boost all the way on the GPU, but we will give it a test at 45 in a second. Either way you look at it, with Forza Horizon 5 at 1080p, low settings, we're getting an average of 87 FPS out of this game on integrated graphics at 1080p. Really amazing performance for an iGPU, but it does get better. We're only at 35 watts, and our clocks aren't quite where they need to be. So I took this up to 45 watts, and it's actually pulling around 48. 1080p, high settings here. And uh, very playable, just like this. We actually got an average of 66 FPS, high settings, 1080p with this setup.
Next up, Genshin Impact, high settings, 1080p. It's trucking through. I did try very high settings, but we did have a lot of dips in the low 50s. But at high settings, with it set up at 35 watts, we get 60 FPS. And every once in a while, I did see it dip down to around 58. But, you know, I think that shader's cash in. If I played through it a little bit, I'm pretty sure we'd just get a constant 60 here at 1080p high with this one. Here's GTA 5, high settings, 1080p, we got an average of 78 FPS out of this, a really great performance. And again, if you take a look at Afterburner, we're still not maxing out that GPU because we're only at 35 watts. This system will go up to 65 and we get much better performance, but I wanted to keep it on the low end just to show you what this thing can really do with this wattage. But I did have to take it back up when we went over to Halo Infinite. Now you can actually run this at 1080p 30 and it works just fine. You can go with a low medium mix on this setup. But if you want to do anything over that, you will have to up that wattage just so we can get that CPU clock and GPU clock up there. When it comes to CSGO, I actually thought we'd get a little better out of it. I mean, it's totally playable like this, don't get me wrong. We're at 1080p, high settings, and we're getting an average of 75 FPS, but I really expected it to be in the 90s with this setup. I did have a request to test out Fortnite. Right now we're at 1080p, performance mode, high settings, and I'm getting an average of 89 FPS. Now out in the open, you're gonna get much higher than that, around 140 FPS. But when there's a lot going on, you're in one of the little cities or the towns with a bunch of people around, it's from around 75 to 85. So yeah, I mean, it's playable here at high. Borderlands 3 is one of those games that has always given me issues on integrated graphics. I did have to drop this down to 900p, low settings, and even set up like this, we do get an average of around 78 FPS, but it does fall below 60 every once in a while when there's like a big explosion or a bunch of particles on screen. I was super excited to test out the new God of War PC port. We're at the original settings, 1080p with Fidelity FX set to performance. I managed to get an average of 40 FPS. Now again, we can still drop that resolution down to 720 or 900, but I wanted to test it at 1080p, and I'd say this is really good for an iGPU. And the final game I wanted to test here was Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p, and right down here at the bottom with the new updates, uh, they've actually done a really good job here. Fidelity FX set to performance, and I was blown away by how well this actually ran. We got an average of 61 FPS, and in the past, I've been really hard pressed to run this at 720p on the Vega iGPUs. But as you can see, with the new updates to the game and the new Radeon integrated graphics, we can play Cyberpunk 2077 at 60 FPS on an iGPU, which is absolutely amazing. So in the end, these are the best integrated graphics on the market right now. And personally, I'm waiting on the new 6000G series desktop APUs from AMD, because with that, we'll be able to do some overclocking on the CPU and the GPU side of things. I think we're going to get some amazing performance out of that also. But when it comes down to a mobile chip or basically any other iGPU that I've ever tested, be it a desktop variant or a mobile variant, this setup here with the Radeon 680M takes the cake. It's the best iGPU performance that I've ever seen, and it will get a bit better with driver up. Updates. It's still pretty early, but uh, you know, we can gain some more FPS on a lot of those games that we tested, but it's doing a really, really great job. I can't wait to see these mobile chips in mini PCs, and hopefully we get a desktop variant soon of the 6000G series. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I will have a couple more videos coming because this is one that I definitely want to put through some emulation testing. So if there's anything else you want to see running on the Radeon 680M, let me know in the comments below. Like always... Thanks for watching.